Right everyone, I think we can all agree that the past year has been yet another crazy one and has most certainly had both its highs and its lows. However, we want to focus purely on the highs and the video that you're about to watch is a two hour compilation of some of our favourite moments from the year 2021. Please remember that if you enjoy this video, there are hundreds of films just like this available via the Subography website. And as I say this, we are running a £10,000 prize giveaway for our members, so there's never been a better time to join. From all of us at Subography, thank you to all of you that have supported us, and we wish you a very happy new year and all the best for the year ahead. Now sit back and enjoy. So, uh, yeah, I literally pulled that long, one of the long rods in from those pads. Not doing a great deal. And uh, the, the little sort of, the little sort of short spot through the trees here. He's, uh, he's got stuck around the bush here. God damn. Um, it's, been, it's been fizzing and uh, I'll, I'll just flick the rod down there. Oh, he's kicking still. He's, just, he's attached to something there. Um, yeah, the little, the little sort of, sort of underarm flick, flicked around the corner, it's only been out there an hour. Right, I think I'm gonna have to take it to the boat. It's, uh, I've got him all the way back, I don't think he's far in, there's a bush there, it's, uh, oh, he's still kicking there, look, there you go. <laughs> he's still on. So I might have to take it to the boat. I'm not the best in the boat, to be fair. I'm rubbish in the boat, so <laughs> I'm going to have to don a life jacket and uh, see what we can do. But he's uh, he's stuck on a branch somewhere, so um, yeah, he's underneath there. I can see I can see by lifting the line up where he is. But yeah, that's the next move. Typical, isn't it? Cheers, buddy. I won't try not to lose it. Stumps here, look. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get him in, Steve. Be a thirty pounder. Well, here you go. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> like a wet blanket, wet flannel, just to add insult into the uh, into the, into the wound. And uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I've got round to the fish. Eventually, sort of, you know, it's quite hard when you're trying to row row or, or reel down to a fish. I keep going left, right, left, right, and eventually got over the fish. And he was only stuck on this, you know, one sort of long sort of stick, and he come off and uh, he come off the stick, and uh, and I'm, pl I'm I'm playing him, but the only thing I could do because I'm right underneath these bushes, was to try and hand line him in and uh, get him off the, get him, the, the, my line was stuck on a tree now, so I'm having to hand line him in. I got him underneath the net, he swam up underneath the net. If I could scoop, I could have done, but I couldn't because the boat, the, the, all I had to do was lay him over and he just went, what? So there was one big head flick and uh, gone. He was, I think he was about 21, 22 pounds. Um, lovely, lovely fish, it was uh, sort of black back. Um, a few few scales down the side and uh, you know on a linear line and it would have made all the difference like you know um, but good fun the footage and uh, you know how to wrap it you know that's two two lost fish maybe three off the floaters as well because I did lose one off there but yeah it's been a hell of a session it's not normally like you know my, my sort of thing I normally do all right on the filming but uh, for some reason uh, for <laughs> it's kicked me in the arse and now I'm gonna have to uh, dry out a little bit because I've not bought any spare clothes with me, which is stupid. So far as we're getting down that road, that was problem one. Uh, problem two now is basically stuck in a track that I don't think I can reverse around. Um, didn't see the dirty great big stump. Smashed my whole bumper. Uh, so yeah, nothing like um, nothing like a bit of an adventure, eh? 
don't really know how I'm going to get out of this one. I think the only option is boot it and hope for the best. But I mean, it, it wouldn't be a French trip, would it, without at least one puncher or being stuck at some point. So, par for the course, I guess. That's absolutely not working whatsoever, is it? I think that was that must have been the first. I guess that was my first attempt when I stoved it into the back there. But you can't turn because of the depth of the rot, can you? The rot just keeps keeping the front wheel in it. I actually bought some all-terrain tyres for this kind of shit as well. They've done me nothing. You don't have these kind of problems at Linear, do you? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> is, that, is that the whole bumper? We're out though. <laughs> well, it's, as, it's as fine as you get in these kind of situations. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, Jesus, look at, <laughs> look at this side. What do you mean? Look at this side! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're... I wouldn't say we're out, mate. <laughs> no, we're definitely not out, Rich. Well, we're out. I didn't think we were getting out, mate. Oh, it's fine. These things only clip on anyway, don't they? <laughs> Powered by Panashock currently. It's gonna, it's gonna stay there, isn't it? Once I got the van out, uh, albeit not quite in one piece, but out at least, I headed round to one of the more accessible points to get the boat out and go and see if we could find some carp and some spots. Right, so I moved round here probably mid-afternoon to be fair. And yeah, I mean, got them out there and it weren't till, yeah, probably nine, ten o'clock when I heard my first one, but it was further that way to be fair. And then like the later the night I got on, they just got closer and closer to me. And by midnight, they were literally bang on me, mate. And yeah, didn't take long, a couple of hours later, one of them's away. Happy days. Right, we'll get this one out first. I'll drop scale. This is the bigger one of the two, this. It's not been out for a while either. Well over a year. But this is probably one of the finest lins I've ever caught. This one <laughs> makes it all worthwhile. I mean, 182 miles it is door to door, mate. So that is justice. <laughs> Fucking mint. It blows away this thing, mate. About them scales. Absolutely epic. I mean, they've got like the black kernels underneath the scales, man. Fucking mint. These carp, mate, and these carp. Look at that. Fucking unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable, mate. That Oxfordshire cream. That. <laughs> Look at that. Not a fucking mark on it. <clears throat> what a carp, mate. <clears throat> Justice. Oh, now that is a carp. Cannot get over that. That's why you come stone is. <clears throat> Incredible carp, mate. Goblin and all. <clears throat> Thank you.
the elusive drop scale. Look at that. Proper stone acres cart, that one. And she's ready. She's been good as gold, bless her. Look at that, mate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Go for round two now. Hope you drink tea, Richard. I don't do coffee, mate. Oh, phone's been going into meltdown, mate. It's one of them that I try keeping it quiet, but someone seen my head torch on at Mad O'Clock this morning was like, have you got one? Uh, couldn't contain the excitement, mate. <laughs> yep. Literally couldn't have picked two better cats to catch last night. That's why we do it, mate. Happy days. <laughs> Surreal night's angling that, mate. You don't get them too often, do you? Watch this. <laughs> oh, mate. Look at that. See what I meant by them there, them scales, it's like someone just smattered them on. <laughs> oh man, what a night. Blown away, man. What a fucking carp. That is up there with the best carp I've ever caught that, mate. Genuinely as well. You would do that now, wouldn't you? You're shitting out. It's been on him. <laughs> the theatre of dreams. No, definitely not, mate. I literally couldn't have picked them better. Look at it, tensing up. Wow. Yeah, all them miles, mate, all the graft, all the early starts, late nights, just all forgotten about the cart like that. Like a dink in its back as well, isn't it? <clears throat> Unbelievable cat, Matt. Thank you very much, girl. You've made me an happy angler. Absolutely fucking unbelievable. <laughs> oh, mate, what a night. <laughs> Man, that is one evil looking carp, that. See where it's got its dorsal up. What a carp. <laughs> unbelievable. The colours of them though as well, like some of the boys back home mate see these pictures, oh my god, they'll be losing the shit. <laughs> it's a super picturesque spot and we've seen carp on the drone, so I'm hoping I can get a rig amongst them without spooking them off too much and hopefully get myself a capture this afternoon or tonight. But yeah, time's cracking on as always, so I really need to get four rigs tied and uh, the boat inflated and everything ready so that we can get on the water and get our rods out. See you soon. Right, we just come back out to the spot again to drop the second rod. You're just going to go straight in at eight meters again. Next to other marker. Now this side, I'm only going to bait with dog sick fermented particles. Oh, smell absolutely disgusting. But it works. Cool. It's fucking rancid. Wear some cheesy socks, eh, babe? Way worse than cheesy socks. <laughs> Just gonna go for a little PVA stick of particle, but this time using a quickly balanced tiger nut, a little bit of fake popcorn on the top. Alright, it's gonna go for my usual technique, so I'm just gonna swing it out, make sure the rig straight, and I'm gonna feather it down. And then boom, went down with a nice little bump. Pucker. Back to the bank then. Let's go. With all our rods out to the best of our ability and carp in the area, we hope this last minute choice of swim 
would bring fish to the bank that night. Yay! Yay! That's what's going on then, Claire. Double take, baby. Does it feel like a good one? Yeah, not too bad. The one I just had was pretty big, to be honest. It's good. Let's get it in. I think we might need the bite. How about that for a bit of first light action then? Lovely one there for Claire. That's it. Good times, <laughs> always. Why are you in your pajamas, Claire? <laughs> but yeah, we've got another incredible one in the net behind us too. So yeah, exciting times this morning. Let's get him unhooked, weighed, and uh, these fish sorted out, and the rods back out, eh, darling? Yes, let's do this. Don't give him that way. Really cool one. <laughs> oh, I'm getting wet. This one's a submarine, mate. <laughs> what a... Oh. <coughs> yeah, that's a puff one. <sighs> what a cool morning. Who would have thought that, eh? I was actually thinking it wasn't going to happen. I woke up a little bit disappointed after seeing all those carp yesterday. And, uh, oh, look at that. Absolutely nailed to death. Yeah, after waking up this morning, feeling slightly disappointed that it hadn't happened after seeing so many fish in the swim yesterday. And yeah, this one just suddenly busted off. Absolutely huge run. It's nailed to death, it was never coming off. But yeah, this one was just in the margin actually, which is a bit of a surprise. Paul and I was just playing this one. Claire's rod busted off too. Another really lovely carp. Oh man, look at him, He's, it's a little female. Look, see how small the pecs are. Look at them. Oh, she's pretty. That's cute. Oh, she's pretty. She's a pretty. She is a pretty. She is a pretty. Bacon oh. sandwich, what do you say? Yeah. She's doing like a bacon sandwich. Maybe we can add an egg on top. Right. Let's see what rigs are good. See if we've got a tiny oh, more. We got up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With both carp safely in the retainers, it was time to get freshened up a bit before the pictures. Yes. <laughs> So early hours of the morning, Samir is in the boat playing his fish. I thought that he took my line, but to my surprise, we had a double take. I played this beautiful carp in 500 meters to the bank. It was a bit of a battle, but here he is. But wait until you see what Samir's got to show you. Ooh, that's a cheese. Yeah, man. But there you go, the first one of the session so far. Yesterday we was fishing at a lake called Sierra Brava and yeah, we caught a lot of small fish through the night. And in the morning, unfortunately an enduro competition had started, meaning we had to leave the lake. We spent a lot of time trying to find somewhere to fish yesterday with the vans. So me and my good friend Christopher Pushmans could have a lovely social together with his family. And yeah, eventually we ended up in this spot here. An absolutely fantastic spot with an incredible view in every direction. And to be honest, we wasn't actually that confident until we spotted a few fish out near the island on the drone. But surprisingly, this fish came from my least confident spot and yeah, was the biggest of this morning's captures. A wonderful carp, clicking in at over 22 kilos. I think it was 22.8 to be exact. An incredible fish and a really, really old gem from the lake. I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> the most fantastic start to the day, hey Claire? Best start. Yeah. We've got a pair of gems, and on our first morning as well, 
We just hope our good buddy Christopher Pashman catches a big one next. Big one for Chris, come on. Yeah, and round off this social in a lovely, lovely way. But yeah, for the moment, we're buzzing. Let's kiss it. Ooh. <laughs>
Ready? Oh, uh, landing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty, forty two and three quarters. Forty two and three quarters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Any good, Dave? Fuck, you know. And I'm playing this fish, and I could, I could tell it was a big uh, fish. It wasn't a classic, you know, one of those, oh, I knew straight away it was a big one, because that, that wasn't the case. But I had a pretty good feeling it was a good fish. And I played it in from quite long range, got him close by, and I see it pop up out in front. I see it was a good common. But the big one in here is quite pale. It's like a golden colour. And this fish wasn't. This was dark. Anyway. Long story short, fish plodded around a bit in the edges, nothing too mad, you know, and then before long, I slipped the net under it, and I looked in the net, and I, in my heart, I knew exactly what carp it was, but because of the disbelief that you often get when you catch a fish that you really want to catch, you know, as much of, much of you knows that it's that fish, the rest of you is kind of convincing you that it's not, that's very much what happened here. I'm looking in the net, and I'm, I said to Apsy, I was like, I don't think he even, I don't know if he was even in his swim when I had, I don't, I can't remember properly. But I remember saying to Apsy, I think I've got the dark common. I don't even know if I told him I was playing it. Can't remember, I remember saying to him, I think I've got the dark common, and sure enough, it was. He might have even been taking his gear around to the car, something like that, but I did. I had the dark common, you know, the fish that was showing on me in the edge that time, the fish that I couldn't get out of my head at that point, and that opportunity, it stuck with me so vividly, and it done my nutting for weeks, it did out the blue, you know, I'd had a bite out in the middle of the lake on my first proper night back, and it was a dark common, you know, it's the fish that, and that happens sometimes, sometimes you get a fish on your brain, you can't force it to be there, you know, if I could force it to happen like that, you know, the big common, I'd have caught it by now, but sometimes there's a fish on your brain, you can't stop thinking about it. I've had it a few times over the years, and then you just catch it, and that's exactly what happened here, and that common is one of the best commons I've caught. It is an incredible fish, and, you know, I was, I was absolutely delighted to have caught it and um, got straight on the phone to me mate Dave to come down and help me with the video and the pictures. <sighs> well, how about that? An absolutely incredible carp. And this is the fish that was showing all over me in the edge the other day. I had a score to settle with her, and I'm so, so pleased to say that I have. It was second on my list of carp that I wanted to catch from here. It's a rare old fish, it's a beautiful fish, and it's also a big fish at just under 37 pound. It's had a spawn out just behind the camera that, you, man, you can't see. Caught this fish at two ounces short of 40 pound the other day. So they've had a spawn, but look how incredible it looks. Not a blemish on it. I am so, so happy. It's my first night back since I've had a baby. And what a way to do it. I'm so happy. Massive winds on the way, 50 mile an hour. It's been blowing all night. Just look at that carp. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Well, here's the other side. I've moved up the bank just a little bit because of the sun. Didn't want to bake him. What a carp. What a carp. I couldn't not show you both sides because I'm far too happy with this creature. Time for him to go home. There's a little snag down there where I've seen this fish sitting. So we'll return him to one of his little haunts. Wow. <sighs> Do you think there's anything in your background uh, and the struggles you've perhaps had, you know, with the, with the name and the identity thing that, that made you like a successful guy and a, ambitious or, or, you know, like, were there things about your past that made you the person you are today, do you think? Well, yeah, the fact I never had nothing. Um, so, uh, you know, you had to sort of find your own sort of way in the world, even as a kid, like your own pocket money and that, you know, like fiddling the telephone boxes and cigarette machines and things like that, you know what I mean? Chewing gum machines, we used to sort of rub all those on, you know? And, uh, but even then I was inventive. I found, well, like, rather than just get the change out the cigarette machine, I wanted the fags as well, you know? <laughs> so, so I made up like a dart type thing with a barb and everything, and I'd sort of drop it down there and I could pull this, and I could pull the, like 10 fags out, you know what I mean? One of them might have a hole in it with a dart went in it, but you just sort of put your finger on it, you know what I mean? I started smoking when I was about 10. <laughs> Yeah. What oh, I got Nick for that. Uh, did you? Yeah, I was, what? I was 11 when I first got Nick for <laughs> breaking into cigarette machines. Criminal record at 11. Yeah. Uh, product of the environment, mate. You know? Of course. Yeah, it was all the same, it was all potless. So if you had anything, like you know, with them bikes, and you had to sort of do it yourself, make it yourself. We used to make our own little catapults out of like the wire fence off the fences, like the eighth wire, um, sh a bit of your shoe leather, you know, for a pouch. And the elastic was the inner tubes of a bike and that, you know. So you start, yeah, I've always sort of been like a bit of inventive in it. And what made you turn to fishing then? Um, when I was a kid, um, we lived at Braiswick. The road's gone now. It's called Brook Cottage. It's just on the outskirts of Colchester near the, near the golf course and that, you know. And uh, my dad, he made me up a float out of a cork, um, a, a quill, and um, because his mate who worked, he worked on a farm, like pruning apple trees and shit like that. And his mate, I remember his name was George Ruggles, even though I was only like that. Um, he was like a fisherman, he had a pond in it, you know, with a, and he, he had a, he'd been in the merchant navy. And he had a, a, like a trout rod in a, in a big pencil case. And so he slid the, the case off, he bought it in the Far East somewhere. And it was like a three, four, five piece, like trout rod. And he was going to go fishing on the River Colne, down Baker's Lane in Colchester. Do you know that one, Elliot? Not really, no. no. And uh, so they were going to go fishing. So he, my dad made me this float, and it was like a, like a blood red colour. He painted it and everything. Uh, I never had a rod or anything. So we, when we was walking down there, he, he went into the, like, the woods and cut out a hazel branch and then tied my line to the thing, you know what I mean? And I uh, went on the river and caught three eels. And I, you know, I was the only one who caught. I caught three eels. And we found an old painting. And I, um, it was like half full of paint that had gone rock hard and everything because never had a lid on it and we put the eels in there and took them home and me old man at them and then that was my first flurry into um, fishing and then when we moved here there's a just over the back on the way to layer there's a little farm reservoir we used to call it bog end or perch lake and it was full of perch so then I was like nine ten we used to go over there like perch fishing and uh, like one to you know, get the worms out your next door neighbour's compost heap and everything like that and you used to unhook them like put your foot on it whatever you do you had to get your hook you know what i mean because it was the only one you had so you pull the hook out you might have half its gills you cast it back out catch another one on its gills <laughs> and, uh, no i'll tell you what don't try this at home folks yeah in in those days i'd get all my fishing gear in a, in a tobacco tin i had a, a like, little spool of bayer pearl on um, a little perch bobber float a um, couple of hooks and um like air rifle pellets you know, for split shot you know, and it was put them on you know and no rod or nothing, you just used to sort of swing it around and throw it out, you know? And it'd get caught around a briefing, you know, and it'd get caught around weeds and, you know what I mean, around your foot. It was a really good one, and all of a sudden it comes flying back, you know? Um, that's what I caught my first carp out of there. Not on the handline, surely? No, but I did have to handline it in. Um, <clears throat> what happened was, um, my friend, a couple of doors down, had been on the Norfolk Broads, and, uh, he came back with some ground bait. We'd never had ground bait before, and he had some left over, and he'd give it to me. So I thought, oh, 
I made up some custard paste. We didn't even know there was roach or anything in there because we are just used to fish for the perch and worms. So I went over this ground bait and custard, and I, and I caught loads of great big chunky roach that we'd never seen them before. You know what I mean? I was there on my own. And because it was so quiet, all of a sudden I heard boof, boof, a great big ripple. And I went, Gah! right? I thought it was a fucking monster in there. I grabbed everything. I run like, you know, run home. And I told everybody there was a monster in bog, bog, bog end. So uh, we thought, right, we all made spears and everything like that, you know. We was only like kids. And we went back over there. <laughs> this is the only time we've ever been over there and been quiet, you know. And uh, we was up a tree. I mean, next door neighbour, Keith Werb, he was educated. He went to the grammar school. And uh, he went, he said, they're carp. Right, we could see these carp, you know, like when we were quiet. So then we went home and researched about catching carp, you know, with a, that faddist book and things like that. And um, like crusts, honey flavoured things, parboiled potatoes, so I got my mum to make us some. And then they kept coming off the hook. And um, Keith, he had a, like a six, seven foot spinning rod from Woolworths and a little four bob centre pin, you know, from Wasses, Willie Wass. And we went over there and we, we tried to catch them on um, floating crust and we couldn't. Uh, so what we did in the end is that we got a slice, a slice of bread and put a, a, free, a, a treble in each corner <laughs> right? and sort of like lobbed this crust of bread out right? and, we, and we hooked one, it was about six, six pounds, seven pounds and um, I don't know what pound line Keith had on his rod right? but he threw the rod down and grabbed the line because he didn't want to break his rod you know, you know? And, he, and I had to strip off naked behind him and we had to sort of scoop it up onto the bank and everything and we'd never seen anything so big in our lives and all that, you know. And um, he wanted to show his dad and that, you know. Uh, and we had a keep net about that long and about that sort of round. We managed to get the fish in it and we were strutting our stuff through the estate and everything. So I went, like, God, like that, you know. And my old man said, he went, God, like you know, Russians and that. That's their Christmas dinner, isn't it? And all, you know, like carp, isn't it, for Christmas. And uh, my old man said, he went, God, he said, I'll give you two and six, half a crown, two and six for it, you know. So Keith sold it to me dad. <laughs> And my dad ate it. Tasted like mud. Ugh. <laughs> that was my first, for <laughs> my first carp. It was a joint effort, like you know what I mean. But, but still, hundred percent record <laughs> from from the word go on the carp. Yeah, yeah. Well, just had a real twitchy bite, um, and it's it's on, but it's in pretty heavy weed. So I'm just concentrating on trying to trying to get it moving which I think we're slowly achieving. But yeah, proper chuffed. Proper, proper chuffed to get another bite. I'm not built for getting into waders quickly. Let's have a look. Come on, come on, come on, come on, let's have a look at you, let's have a look, yes, I think that's one of the proper lovely scaly ones, Have a look at this one. <sighs> what a carp! Yes. <sighs> this is one of the reasons why I really come here. These scaly creatures are incredible, and this is one of the prize ones. It's not massive. But wait till you see this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, you can probably tell from the smile on my face, I'm absolutely blown away by the one that's in the net. That is incredible. Like I was saying earlier, this lake has got so much variety. That 34 pound unique mirror, should I say earlier, and then this is a comparator in two bites. It just goes to show you what you can fish for in this place. This one, this one is something special though, and I can't wait to show you it properly.
I reckon that's actually a 30 pounder, you know. It's got the width and length to be a 30 pounder, that. Do. Thirty-two nine. <laughs> what a trip! What a car! Oh man! How? about that i feel really really lucky right now this kind of fish is the reason i do loads of miles loads of walking loads of baiting up this is a seriously special fish what a character that is just look at it i can't really say anything else about you mate other than wow just wow Jesus. Just going to have a look at the other side, which is just as stunning. What a creature. Thank you very much. Seeing as the time of day this bite's come, I'm going to crank the rods in, freshen the spots up, go have a freshen up myself, and then get the rods back out for the evening. What a result. What a result. <laughs> well, after three or four years of being a member of the lake and over a hundred bites, this is easily my favourite capture from here so far. I absolutely love this fish. This is incredible and just the kind of carp I love to catch. <sighs> wow. I think we found ourselves a fun new water that may well fish in the winter as well. So delighted with that. Thanks to me old mate for, um, for letting us plot up next to his caravan. Look at you pulling those silly faces, you monkey. Um, and uh, we're off home. That said, the weather is that good. I'm going to get home. We're going to have dinner, get him to bed and everything. And then once he's in bed, I've said to Faye, I've got to get back down to the lake. So I'm going over the big park lake. That's a funny face. And um, yeah, I can't miss this weather. It is epic. So I'm going to get myself over to the park lake just on dark. And you never know, that big old mirror might be waiting. So I am now home. I've had dinner and I'm off to back to the lake in about two hours time. First of all, I've got to finish writing the magazine article. I'm writing the rotary letter this month for Carpology, which is pretty cool. So have a read up of that if it's out by the time this is out. So I'm gonna get this done and then uh, get ready to go to the lake. It's the first time I've seen that new hotel switch its lights on and off and on again. <laughs> Obviously testing them out. Bloody great big hotel being built there. Don't know what it's going to do for the fishing when it is finally open. Because there's one being built over there as well. So, got to make the most of it. There we go. Three rigs ready to go. It's late, so better get them out. Well, good morning. To say that the events of last night were nothing short of epic, is an understatement. What a night's fishing. I got down here really late last night. I was, um, I was fishing with Huxley yesterday, which was successful, and the weather was so good, I, uh, I just had to come down to the park and it didn't disappoint. Some hours uh, of the night, I caught a lovely, beautiful torpedo-like common. That was shortly followed by the most beautiful scaly mirror. And then I had a UK PB. Now it's pretty mad. I actually caught that fish several years ago. Elliot came down to do the footage for Sipography all those years ago. Um, and it was 48.6, I think back then. Well, this morning it was 53 pound, four ounce, my first ever UK 50. And even though it's a repeat, 
it's pretty damn nice to have my first UK 50 from a place that my mum and dad used to push me around in a push chair in. Um, I grew up fishing this lake for bits and bobs, was chasing that fish for a long time and unbelievably I've now had her twice but I did have a little word and say right look stay away from me now go and have a little word with you mate the mirror and um, hopefully he'll be next. So I apologise to the people that fish here um, who haven't caught her. I'm delighted that she was 50 plus. Um, I'm obviously not fishing for her. Um, I'm fishing for some of the other gems that are in here and uh, hopefully she'll leave me alone now. But what an incredible fish. Let's have a look at her now. Well, it is stupid o'clock in the morning. The rod has rattled off and you would not believe what I have just landed. Oh. Well, how about that? A new UK PB, 53 pounds, four ounces. It is a repeat capture of the big girl, but it's a new UK PB and look at the size of it. Absolute unit. <laughs> right, I'm going to get her back. Unreal. Well, she was in unbelievable condition, looking an absolute brute, and I'm sure she will go even bigger. It's now first light. It's cold, I'm wet, I'm soaked. I am gonna pack up and go home a very, very satisfied chap. Yeah, sure enough, the bobbin was up tight and then I could just hear a single bleep. Where my receiver was back up the back of the swim in my bivvy, I hadn't, I hadn't heard the few bleeps it had taken to get the bobbin to the top and it was exactly the same as the fight with the box. As soon as I picked it up, it was slow, it was heavy and I'm like, this has got to be in. Everything else has been out, this is James's. I think I even said it in the fight. Shit on it. just in the water and I noticed that my middle tip was much lower than the other two and it shouldn't have been. I promise I'll show you these fish in a minute. It's all going off. That's in weed. Or a snag. Oh. Oh, I thought it'd come off. Still might have done. Fish on. It's just woken up. Very, very angry. cleared the other rod, which is good. God, he's charging. I was only just saying, weren't I, with every bite now, you think it could be it. Conditions are so good. It's been such a rubbish spring. Weather's been all over the place. Only like 10 days ago, still getting frosts. This feels like the first big weather change of the year and it's certainly turned the fish on. It's not been all ideal though, first couple of nights, couldn't buy a bite. Fish three different swims to eventually, before they sort of let me know where they were, once I was on them, started catching quite quickly. The owner actually popped over to see me last night to show me the album of carp that he properly keeps on top of. And there is literally, I think, five fish in here that I've not caught. Got to be getting close, got to be. I don't think this is in there. Sorry about hitting you there, Elliot. It's one of them sorry, not sorry moments. 
Monkey's getting hot, but he's taking his scarf off. It's not him. <laughs> I think everything I'm sort of convincing myself that it could be. Who cares? Try to keep getting bites. Could be a brace of 40s, this. It's not been out yet. It's another one that's not been out, funnily enough. Well, like I was saying, there's not many fish that haven't been out yet. And this is one of them, it's a fish called Vader. And it was last out, I think in January at just under 40 pound. The amazing to think he's over that way. Either way, he knows how to ruck. I've got the biggest brace of carpet I've ever had. This is, this is mega. As it turns out, it got even sweeter because the box was 40 pound 10 and the Vader, somewhat surprisingly, I can't remember now if it was £40.6 or £40.8, but yeah, over the moon. Perfect end, almost, to my spring campaign. Now let's have a look at the fully. about that for a proper fully scaled. I'm not going to reweigh him, I like to say I only caught him a few weeks ago, but he's, he's 25 to 26 pound, proper special carp. But the best is yet to come. That could be one of the most epic GoPro returners ever. Oh my God. Um, what we probably have to do, when you get blackthorn in your skin, the safest thing is to let the person nearest you cut that limb off so that the poison doesn't spread and I'm the nearest person. I've got a little tracker knife. I could... Yeah, be a bird. <laughs> I could peck your... Uh, I could peck your arm off. Yeah, get out. Black My fault if I get you. looked at it when he was sat properly, he's fucking wide. Sure, you know what, help me. Yeah. 
famous for yeah. But I'll let you read it. That's over. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Is, hang on, is it? Hang on, you read it? Yeah, of course I have. Forty pound eight. <laughs> yeah. Tell you that. <laughs> Get in. Yes. I know that this fish and the one that's still in the sling, they're both repeat captures, but it, it ain't every day you catch a brace of UK 40. So some people are watching this frowning, going, how can you get excited about a repeat capture? I get excited about any capture. Two UK 40s. Yes. It'd be incredible if the box has lost weight now. <laughs> Forty pound, mate. If he grew into his shoulders, he'd be a ninety-three pounder. Look at that hump. Epic, epic. I love this carp. Uh, <laughs> pinhead, that's what it should be called. Well, known as Vader, without doubt one of the most unique carp I've ever caught. He's got the head of a 15 pounder, the body of a 50, and by the time you work out your average, you get 40 pound eight. That'll do. Let's turn him round, have a look at the other side. It's not even the splosh, it's the lead landing on the bottom I worry about as well. Like the, the, the sound of it. Nah, I don't. You know, like a bigger lead, I mean, yeah. Try and coax him back under. Two minutes, if that, and it was away. Just going under the trees, but it's all undercut, which is all right. Just under the rod tip now. That is exciting. Oh, that's it. Slowly, slowly coming up. Oh, looks like a lovely, lovely old dark one. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Yes. Wow, what a result. For literally two minutes of rod in the right place. It's like a real old wrinkly one. It's got a wide across the back. Yeah, proper made up with that. Still shaking. That was mega exciting stuff. Nicking one so quickly. I don't think Rob was in the water for more than a minute. It looks like a proper cool one as well. They're quite a big one. Yeah, that's the reason I'm so impatient. So I've just had a walk around the other side and um, yeah, there's loads of fish swimming up and down the margins up that end. Um, not a lot going on here. I reckon bike time's past now. So um, I'm going to quickly wrap everything up, shoot up there and just see if there's, you know, one more quick opportunity before we go. There's, there's two or three of them there now. Um, I'm all right to just get the rig in. Sweet.
Oh, it's just come off. <laughs> oh. oh, well, there you go. At least we saw it, and it was only another small common, I don't know, 20 pounder or so. Bastard. Well, I reckon that might be my, uh, my chance blown here. Um, you know, it's quite a shallow, sort of intimate spot in the edge. Um, there has been a few visiting, though, so I'm going to put a handful of bait here. Um, Scott's got a really nice one round on the island. So we're going to head round there now, do some pictures of Scott's fish and that. And um, I'll come and check this one more time before we go. You never know. There might be one more chance. We'll see anyway. Right. Hey, he's a cool calf. He's well deep. Yeah, mate. His back looked well wide when he was coming in. Yes, mate. He's quite short, though, isn't he? Got the net as well, has it? That's it, mate. Yeah, no, it's definitely a different car. I'll Got spin it around and grab the net for us. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Good day. Thanks, mate. Got yeah. He's a proper character, isn't he? <laughs> he is, mate, yeah. <laughs> He's trash in the bottom. <laughs> You feeling strong or should we both? Yeah. 33 pound. That'll do mate, I'll take that. He's uh, <laughs> not quite as big as I thought. But He's got a thick old I, head. I thought he? that was a really big fish when he lifted it out. <laughs> right. You ready mate? Yep, yep. Oh yeah, he's cool he is mate. Just lift his head up a tiny bit. That there? That's the one mate, he looks lovely. Yeah, play. It's been a good trip, hasn't it? Oh, mate, play? it's been mega. Getting round, getting round, nicking them out the edge. Yeah, it's been exciting, like. Yeah. Oh. Perfect way of fishing. Yeah. You've had a couple of good ones as well, which is yeah, uh, been lucky. always a bonus. Been lucky, mate. We're just glad we got some bites between us. Yeah. No, it's been good, man. It has been really good. Yeah. Seen plenty of big ones as well. Yeah, there's loads in here, isn't yeah. there? Shame we didn't get one of them real big ones, but as I say, you've had a couple of really nice ones, so... Uh, yeah, made the trip, mate. Nice that we both got a few. That's it, mate. Couldn't have asked for much more, really. No. Gives us something to come back for and all, doesn't it? That's it, mate. That's it. There's always next time. That is it. Right, mate, that's his best side by far. Um, it's, uh, I think I'll treat his other side and then just get him back. Yeah, that's it, mate. He's an old boy, isn't he? Uh, yeah, as you say, that's definitely his best side, mate. Yeah, buzz in with that. Yeah, fair play. Cheers, yeah, that's mate. a proper result that is mate, well done. Thanks mate. Now the key is now to try and keep him in the sling. We'll both carry him if you want. Just so he doesn't lie on that side until yeah, he's in yeah. the water. Yes mate. Going off. You want to take the net with you? Yeah mate. Oh he's a blacker. <laughs> Yes! Yes! Made up with that. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Oh, mate, he looks <laughs> wicked. How about that? Another good one? Oh, mate, he's black. <laughs> he looked pretty black. His lips look black and everything. <laughs> he's still munchy. Yeah, wicked. God, yeah, loving yeah. this. <laughs> right, it's all kicked off a little bit. We've had another bite while we were sorting his other side out. But, so, uh, I'm going to get this old dinosaur back, but well pleased with him. It's made my trip to be fair, him and that common. Yeah, right, let's let him go. Oh, mate. He's all right, he is. Go on. <laughs> I reckon he's as big as the last one. He feels as heavy. <laughs> He's cool, he is. Yeah. Mate, he's like How deep dusting. he is, bro. Oh, mate. Oh, he's cool, he is, mate. Look how deep bodied he is. Oh, <laughs> he is proper. He's solid as well. That's the male. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smidge under 34. 
Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 33, 12, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Lovely. Yeah, man. <laughs> three, three, three. Oh, well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Yeah. We'll take that at the end. <laughs> Last minute in the world. Yeah. He's a completely different shape as well. They're all, they're all different, aren't they? Yeah, wicked. Right. Let's look at his other side first. Yeah, cool. Right, get him up for a couple of pictures. Yeah, that's the side, mate. Good. Ready, mate? Yeah. That's the one, mate. Hold him there. He's cool, he is. Oh. <laughs> he is. He is, but he is definitely going to be the last fish of the trip. This Tom Nick's one on the way to the car park, <laughs> which is every chance. We'll see. I'm going to quickly check that edge spot on the way out. But, um, but yeah, if not, mate, it's been mega. We'll have a quick look at the other side. Yeah, mate. Cut the pictures yeah, in. Yeah. Lift him up. That's it, mate. Hold in there. He's proper, he is. He is, mate. Oh. Almost like a dustbin. He is. Proper what you expect from uh, from Swan Valley, yeah. Except he's so lively. Let's get him back. Yeah. Think. Yeah, no. Mega result though, mate. Cheers, mate. Made up with that. Yeah, good angling that was, man. Definitely still fish there, yeah. Oh, there's loads, there's still fish coming in. What's that going out? Did you see that there? It's quite a good one as well, I think. Oh, I reckon that's enough bait. Oh, there's loads, there's absolutely loads. Can you see it? Oh, look. Oh, what the fuck? I reckon there's one on there, isn't there? Bruv, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, oh. Leave that rod. Day. Fuck. Chuck me that net. Right on in the tree. Right on the edge of it, there. Where even is it? Eh? Oh, there. Oh, mate, it's quite a good one as well. Chuck me that net. Quick. Chill out. Yes, bro. <laughs> Fuck. Mate, what is that? That's absolutely lush. Oh, fucking hell. Know. I thought I'd absolutely ruin the swim. I don't know what to do now. That must have been like feeding. Obviously, when them two rods are next to each other, it must have been feeding like next to the right hand rod. Do you reckon it done me on the right hand rod? No. No, but think about it. That right hand rod was the one with no. You know, I was like, oh, I ain't got any shrink tube, I ain't got time, blah, blah, blah. So I flicked the one out of no shrink tube. That's the one that was going like liner and like that. And then the other rod with the shrink tube just churned off. I don't know if I'm thinking way too much into it, but. <sighs> Shook up. That's savage. Mate, we've been here about one minute. I reckon that line was caught to that line and that fish was going that way. Because when you pick that rod up, it was already around there. 
I reckon your line off your left hand would have caught your other one. So yeah, potentially, yeah. Because that fish was down here by the time you put that up. That's a big carp as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 36 pounds. Yeah. I think I know what it is. I'm tempted to... Do I go and get tie up two new rigs quick, flick them out there and then we sort the fish out or what? Yeah. I might as well stay in here for a bit, didn't I? I don't know that they're probably all going to leave now. I think we I think you could we could get away with another one as well, more for the fact that loads of them are sat right in the back of the trees and I just caught that there and it went that way. I reckon I'm gonna um tie up a couple more fresh rigs, flick them there and then we'll just get that out and sort that out. That was so quick. So I mean, mate, those heinous snowmans just, just seem wrong for that sort of thing. Were you actually recording that bite? <laughs> Love. I'm just gonna wait. There is still fish about. I really thought they'd have all left. So I've quickly run around, tied up another couple of fresh rigs, and I'm just gonna get back over there. There's one literally cruising around there now. He's just gone over the back of the trees. I reckon I could probably get this in. There's a shit drop. That was a shit car. That's better. I actually thought there was a knot in my break my floor here. Right, the other one. Don't know why I'm still trying to put two down there, but fuck it. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in! Look at it. Another big one as well. Real fucking good. It's about the same size as the other one, I think. That's the one that was in the tree line this morning. It's the brute with a big patch on his shoulder. <laughs> that's the one with the scow in the, this morning I said it was up there. And that's a 40 pounder. Go on the boy. Watch out, they're gonna get out. No, they ain't. One yeah, look, that's a brute. That's a 40 pounder all day long, bro. <laughs> yes, yes. I've got two already. Yes, mate. That's like seven, I don't know what it is, fucking a lot of fish. I needed a lighter. I needed a lighter to light the stove. Look at the size of that thing, mate. Which is the new one on the left? Yeah. The massive fucker. Oh, yeah, shooting. That's sick. I'm going to quickly whip this one in and chuck this one back out. Oh, yes, it's not even blunt. Mate, them Kamakura X's are actually way better. He fucked it. No. 
No, it's in the fucking tree. Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. No, he's falling. Tap this one off right now. <laughs> that is going to stay up the tree, that one. For now. Till later. It's that fucking right hand side. I just can't get it on there. That's the one. What's brilliant is we've already filmed down in Gravelly one of my rigs from last weekend up the tree. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sinking in it. I'm scared now. I've definitely dropped my fucking photo of the path. Go on, liners, already. That's gonna go. Again. That's not right. I can't have another one in there. <laughs> I thought they'd have all left, mate. I've got one rod with the rig in the fucking tree, literally. <laughs> You'd think they just leave, but I swear that's where that's just this where they come out the bush, isn't it? So they go in that way and they don't realise when they come out. And where I'm just pulling them straight away from the tree, they, they, like the first one was over here, and then that one didn't even go near, didn't get no near the tree. <sighs> yeah, you can talk. It's fine. You'll just be in it now. <laughs> That's why Elliot doesn't talk. Doesn't like being in it. Go on. Mate, what is going on? That's got to go shortly. Well, you'd think they'd all just leave. <laughs> Where? Oh no, that's my. That's that. It's run out of battery. I thought it was fucking flashing in the lake or something. No, because I brought. I started walking back with it. This is ridiculous. He's a big angry cod. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not, I'm doing tonight. We're filming, we've got a guest here tonight. Gate inside the gate, isn't it? It's a scaly one as well, I think. Oh, mate, it's another good one. Mate, that's lush. Mate, my rig's tangled as well. It's tangled around the lead core. Is it? I've never caught the mug. I said that's what I really need to catch the mug. I said this last night. Is it? <laughs> this is fucking insane. <laughs> Is it the mug? Sure. How big is the mug? Is it £40? I had it. It looks big. £39. 
So it's like the last winter. Look at the size of it, man. Oh, it's beautiful. It's lush. Where's them big ones? Yeah. Wee. <laughs> Mental. No, he's definitely done me. I ain't getting away with that. Should have tied rigs instead of making coffee. Steph slipped his little mirror back and the next half an hour was just a blur of four bites and rig tying, culminating in two really lovely 30 pounders. That was the one I was about to wind in. Ah! Jesus. Mate. Yeah, it's... Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mess. Where the f*** did that branch come from? Sorry, I've got to stop swearing, haven't I? No wonder he was turbo. Look at his tail. Absolute fighting machine. Upper 20, maybe scrape 30 pound. Lovely carp though, clean one, fighter. Literally about two minutes from winding this rod in as well. I was a little bit concerned there might have been something wrong with it because it hadn't gone. But um, yeah, another male as well. Definitely on a big bunch of males here. Those big females might be somewhere else I reckon, but Nice one, girl. Or not girl, guy. Uh, that'll be a bite in the background. See you later, mate. Nice one. Shit, he's going. Take it in, isn't it? It's not often you catch 10 or 15 a day. In fact, never. First common of the day. A wildy looking fella. Come on, mate. Yeah. Sweet. Eight, nine, maybe ten. I'm not sure. Hey. No fish. A wildy looking fella, him, isn't he? Ace. Come on, mate. Let's find some tiger nuts. Hopefully, he's slightly more placid than yesterday's linear. Come on, mate. Maybe he's not. Let's have a mat. <laughs> Big old grey fella. Oy. Best one of the day so far. Decent mid 30. The older looking one. Steely grey. His ace. Really wide fella as well. <laughs> Mega. Nice one, mate. Yo. Weather really closed in that afternoon. Dark, moody skies, big winds, rain, definitely big barrage weather. And Although there's a lot of carp in that lake, I'm sure, I reckon a huge percentage of them ended up down at that end of the lake and probably out in front of me that afternoon. 100% barrage weather this is, isn't it? Here we go. Didn't really fancy getting any bites right in the middle of the storm. Um, and not only did I get one, but I actually ended up getting two. It's wild. Whoa! Please, 
please don't be a bite now. I'm hoping it was just the uh, some hail hitting the bobbin. Single bleep back. It's got to be in it. It's a drop back though, isn't it? Could do with the jacket, really, Rich. Thankfully, Steph was on hand to help me play the second one. And um, yeah, after a long fight, ended up with a really nice, chunky, sort of mid upper 20 in the net. Steph? Definitely feels like a better one. Still a long way out and he's going still. I'm gonna call it, I think this might be the one. Yee! You must have got a hilarious shot of me knelt down next to that French geezer. Me looking terrified, him just not giving <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I'll keep my tip down. I don't want to get struck by lightning. <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, maybe I've overplayed the danger here. Really glad this wasn't in the middle of that crazy storm. A little bit lantern. Get in, get in. Amazing impression of a uh, much, much bigger one. <sighs> right. Make some sense to this again. Nope. Oh, right, mate, give me a minute. Have a quick look at you. <sighs> really cool, steely grey mirror. Fought like an absolute tank, way beyond his, uh, his stature. Lovely, lovely carp still. Um, Seems to have got into a group of better ones actually at the moment. The last few have been, have definitely been a better stamp. So still males, clearly. So um, yeah, I don't know where them big females are, but I kind of feel like we get are getting a bit closer to a better one. Got to get some rods back in the water and yeah, hopefully we will get one. But either way, these are lovely all day long. Halfway through tying a rig, and yeah, this was way a couple of minutes, it was in again. Pretty dogged actually, this one. Big old shoulders. Yes. My oh, arm's going to fall off if this keeps up. He wasn't coming off. That's what you come here for, isn't it? The last one in that mad flurry of bites that afternoon ended up actually being the best one of the trip. Um, and timed perfectly as well for Vanessa arriving again with another beautiful big bowl of home cooked food and some more pastries for us. Really, it was the perfect end to the day. Amazing. You come to France just for those? Yeah. Oh, we, oh, yeah, I drive to France just to eat them. <laughs> Never mind the carp. <laughs> there you go, how about that? <laughs> That's exactly what we came here for. Amazing end to a beautiful couple of days fishing. Some mad weather, some amazing home cooked French food from Vanessa, Stefan's wife. Been wanting to catch up with him for a couple of years and um, yeah, finally managed it. Caught some lovely, lovely carp. Thoroughly enjoyed every bit of it. So yeah, gonna get this, get this one back, get the kit sorted out, which is completely trashed. Have a little think about what we're gonna do and um, yeah, head off somewhere else. For something a little bit different, I think. Thank you. Made my day. Yo.
try a white one. Instead of keep, what do they say? The carpy word, match the hatch. Do you know what? I bloody hate that word. Three words. Match the hatch. Trap set. Come on, baby, calm down. It may seem a bit weird. Keep the camera on me. It is on your behind you. <laughs> right, it may. <laughs> It may seem a bit weird, but when you're playing these, you, you don't want it to be a moid, you want it to be a, one of them babies. You're just like, it's the future. It's my future. What I mean is like, in 10, 15 years time, I'll be back on places like Lake 5, 6, where I'm red carded after catching Rosie. There's no good pulling, you know, or no need to pull their heads off. Just, this is like on a mission, this one. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah, look, it's on the top. See it? Look, there's a swirl by the reeds there. Cut, oh, big head shaking. Come on, baby. That's it, she's coming out again now. It could be like a double row linear, a fully scaled mental. It might be an Elliot lovable one. What I mean is a moid. I bet you cut the moid out, didn't you, Elliot? Yeah? Oh, it's right on it, this one. I get asked a lot about braid fishing. I don't want leaders on. What I mean is like fluoro leaders and that. It's, it's too dangerous. The old braid just cuts through anything. So as long as you've got your clutch set nice, which I have, that's all I, that's all I need to worry about. Give some, take some. There he is, look, oh! All right, the baby. Oh. See, when it's head shaking like that, I just take the just take the pressure off, just let it take it. I mean, over the last couple of years, um, some of these originals have gone in and um, original babies into the lakes. And I did have one out of Lake Seven, which is the biggest we know of so far, 28. You know, this is like a 13 foot three and a half test curve rod. There's not a lot more pressure I can put on that, to be fair. I don't want to, not with braid. That's where they were like really sheeting up. Hey, another one just jumped over there. They're on it. Big swells on the top or coming like coming deep down, to be fair. All the way, all the way around there. It's got the other rod, that ain't good. All right, baby. Well and truly got that other rod. Come on, baby, come back. You never know that I think there's five or six originals still left in here, which uh, didn't make it. Now we're going to get the other rod. Oh, look at the scales on that. I want that back over that rod. Get over that rod. Come on, baby. 
I'm not, I'm not knitting today. I see a big scale, don't know what that is, might be a moid. So with the other line we've got, we just take it even more easier. Yeah, that's a moid. That's a chunk, isn't it? Jesus Christ, get in that net. Oh. Right, I want to get that hook straight out because we've got another line on that. Don't fall in, Jim. You love a moid, Elliot, didn't you? Do you want to have a little picture? <laughs> right, now I've got to run knit. There we go. Do you know what? It's the first moid I've had this end. What I like to do is uh, rest the carp, gives you time to sort yourself out and chill out, and it gives the carp time to chill out. And then don't make no mistakes. What I mean is you've got everything ready for you to take pictures, etc. <sighs> got one. Got one. That weren't out there long, was it? <laughs> yeah, cheers. Cheers, Ollie, thanks. I reckon this will be one of the babies, this one. It's coming in quite, but you never know. Smaller one. Come on, baby, don't touch that other line. Little baby. Hmm. Oh well, that's a strip off job. That's one of them original, it's a mirror as well, mate. Get out. Cheers, mate. Thanks. We're having a good net in here, aren't we? Yeah, just pull the clutch, or, or just pull the line off the clutch. That's it, sweet. There we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, 
Jesus Christ. You know where that's going, don't you? That's got to go in there, mate. Think about, think, look, we lost the lid. Yeah, but we lost the big lid here, didn't we? That's an original baby. That's an original. Flipping knitting. Yeah, you know it, don't you? Ready? That's a 30 days. That's a nice one, bigger than I thought. Got to put a little bit of curacy there. All right, baby. Go on, then. Who's going to read it? Right, this baby weighs 36 pounds, 10 ounces from Lake Four, and we're releasing it into Lake Seven into its new home, and we've named it the Piglet. And this is the future of the wall pack in many ways. It's a cracking looking moid, this one. What do you reckon, Elliot? Look at the mouth on that. Lovely. Look at that. Good tail on it as well. Yeah, round, isn't it? Look at the mouth, look, right under slung, look. <laughs> He's going to be a tricky one. And by the shape of that, I would say that's going to grow into well, a monster. There you go. Long running chod, Mistral Baits, Atlantic Crab, over a scattering of bait, and I reckon we've been in position, well, <laughs> about 30 minutes. And I think we'd had a tench before that on that rod as well. But there you go, look at that. What a fish. Right, let's let her go. Go on, mate, grow into a big one. Cheers. Thank you. Look at that. Might have another one yet. You seem um, somewhat unexpectedly like your like conservation and animals are really important to you. Absolutely, they're very important. Without animals, we, we can't exist without them. That's what annoys me about the, the world today. I mean, people pay money for RSPCA. What about the leopards that are nearly extinct? What about the jaguars that are nearly extinct? This is what I pay for. I don't pay for cats and dogs. They're billions of them. We can lose a few million of them. I don't mean this to be rude for any of you dog fanciers out there. I, mean, I love dogs. I love all animals. But there comes a time when you've got to pay for the most important animals. You, think, you see an ant down on the floor there. You think that's not important. It's the most important creature on the planet, mate. Because bang, kill all the ants. What feeds on the ants? That's your next level. That's got nothing to feed on. So that dies out. What feeds on that? There's your next level. What feeds on that? That gets dies out. And it goes all the way across the top of the chain. And that's what a lot of people do not understand. Kill the bees. 
Within 10 years, their human race will be knackered. The bees are an important part of our life. All animals, all animals, all in insects. And one of my greatest things, well, not one, there, there, there's several. Uh, right. When I got down to um, fish for the pineapple, that was told me it was well over 40 pounds, but it wasn't. But I went down to fish for it anyway, because I didn't see it. And... Uh, which we're talking cops like Yately, yeah? Yeah, the cops, yeah. And so basically, uh, it's June the 15th. I've, I've arrived, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to meet. Now, if you've been to my toilet, you'll see there's a, a what do you call it, a, 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 what do you call it, cult, a caricature or something like that. What do you call them things? When people draw funny drawings about oh, it. Oh, caricature. Caricature. It's in my toilet. And you'll see the duck on the side of the bar, right? So basically, when I get there, uh, I've plunked my, my, my gear down and I can see these swans going mental bashing this little white duck to pieces. So I run round there, got hold of the duck, brought it back to me swim, but I'm st I've still got to set my gear up. So the duck has sat there beside me, right? And everywhere I go, the duck wah, 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 and wobbling around my feet, I get away. And so basically I set the bivvy up, right? And I thought, right, I've got loads and loads of pop-ups in, in, in a bait book, so I open the bait, give it a pop-up. All right. So I set the pop-up, I thought, oh, well, at least I've got some food for it because it don't want to go back in the lake because of these swans. So there's a photograph somewhere, and it's a fantastic photograph, and I'm, 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 I'm kneeling down like that, looking out at the lake, and a duck is sat right beside me. Yeah, You can't get better than that. So I don't care who you are. So, that night, it's June the 15th, and we're going to all meet in a pub for a pint before June the 16th start off, 12 o'clock. So I had to walk through another lake to get there. So it's about, uh, I don't know, six, seven o'clock at night. And uh, of course it's still ever so light, June the uh, 15th. And as I'm walking through it, all of a sudden I went, whack, 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 whack. I thought, behind this bloody duck following me. <laughs> oh, oh, mate. So I went back, I picked her up. I, I, I can only say to her, I don't know. I picked her up and I thought, all right, we're going to the pub together. <laughs> this is where the funny bit is. I've got all the, all the boys were there already. Terry Pefferbridge, Rob McGill, and uh, Martin, uh, they're all in there. <laughs> so basically I've got to the door, and I've booted the door up and put the, the duck down, and the duck, rah, rah, rah. Jesus Christ, that's my new mate. Put the duck on the bar, and the, the bad thing was I didn't know the duck was a drinker. So I'm having a pint, and obviously when I'm, when I'm in a pub, I do take court, I tell stories and stuff, you know. And of course I'm not watching the duck. And the duck is drinking my beer. And then all of a sudden I went plump. And I'll turn the duck fell off the bar onto the floor. <laughs> and so I picked the duck up. She's so not getting on the bar anymore. And it was near closing time. And I said, oh, I've got to go back now, lads. So basically we got back to the bivvy. The duck saved me all the time. And, and, and the great part about it is uh, in the morning she goes <laughs> on the bait box. Grub. That's what I want, grub. So I have to pay much, give her a cut of boilies. And uh, for the months uh, after that, I fished that lake, every time I got there, that duck, wherever it was, would come straight to me and just spend it. If I was there for a weekend, that duck would be there for the weekend. Really. And you'd get every morning. It wouldn't be a night, it'd be in the morning, tap, tap, tap. Uh, these are some of the fantastic things of, you know, another fantastic thing I saw was my old friend Vic Gillings. And we were fishing this place in Stanford Abbots. And this swan was absolutely gone. Through the lines, backwards and forwards. Like, shh, give it all that like you're doing. It wouldn't have it. So I said, so you got any bread? Oh, I said, yeah. He said, give me some bread. I'll get hold of this one. Oh, you don't, don't hurt it, mate. He said, I ain't going to hurt it. I'm just going to pull it to sleep. I said, what, are you going to kill it? He said, no, I'm going to pull it to sleep. Yeah, all right. Oh, I, want to find, I want to see this. So I guess, well, anyway, is it? And this is God's honest truth, mate. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. So he's feeding this swan up, like, and all of a sudden, bang, he's great around the edge, right? As, no, as soon as he's done that, he's put it under its wing and laid it down on the footpath. It's asleep. You tell me you've ever seen anything done like that? Never. The swan was asleep. All you've got to do is put the, the head underneath the wing and it goes straight to sleep. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. I thought he was going to kill it. Okay, so we are in position. The boats are behind us. You know I mean now, there's a gap in the trees we're going to fish from. And it's now time to unload, get the rods out. This might be the last time you see me today. I think I'm just going to crack on, we ain't got long till it gets dark. So we're going to get our shit sorted, 
probably catch up with you in the morning because it is getting on to about nine o'clock and it's going to be dark at ten. What was that noise? Yeah, we're going to crack on. Houston, we have a bit of a problem. We have a propeller wrapped in braid. It's half past three in the morning on night number one, and we're in trouble. This is not good. However, I have got some good news. I have a 49 pound mirror in a sling behind me. It's going to get light in a minute. I think if it was the UK, it would almost be light already. But because we are in the middle of nowhere, it's still pitch black here. But yeah, I've got a massive mirror carp. Towed me all around the pond, hence why I've now got this rod wrapped up. But we've got a 49 pound mirror in the sling, which is the very best start we could ever have hoped for. Mitch had a bite as well. Unfortunately, he's lost his in a snag. So how about that? We've got the rods out. I didn't think I'd see you two in the morning, but I couldn't wait till then to tell you this. So, big carp in a sling, big fucking problem down here in front of me, but we'll take the positives with the negatives and uh, when it gets light, try and sort things out. Well, there we go. Called the crimp tool to the rescue. We have the propeller off. Oh shit, I just dropped the bolt, yeah. <laughs> right, we're in the game now. Just got to untangle that lot somehow. Which is not going to be fun. There we go, so there's something to add to our checklist for next time. Spanner for propeller. <laughs> there we go, look. The old alarm's going off. Isn't it? There we... That's my four o'clock alarm, or quarter to four alarm. Four o'clock alarm, yeah. Stop. Back in the game. We are good to go. Let's get some uh, get some stuff sorted. Get this rod ready to go back out. Be light soon. You got one. <laughs> you need to get in that boat, mate. I've got that on film as well. Sort of. Just let it go, mate. Let the fish go and get in the boat. Go on, boy. Out you go. <laughs> Is that the long one in the silt? How about this for a morning look? Look at that. We've got a 49 pounder over there to the left, already caught. And then we've got old Mitchie boy out in the boat, playing his first fish. Well, his second fish, he lost one in the night. How big we say, Mitch? How big? Doesn't want to say to the camera. Small, that means small. We came here to catch a carp, mate, and that's what we've done. We've completed this lake. Next venue. It's easy that boat, this boat laugh, isn't it? Hoist him up. Right, so this is Mitch's first one. Lovely.
There we go, that's what we come to France for, mate. Yes, carp under our belts. What's the old saying? Go get your grandma or get your mother, innit? That needs great great grandmother, that one. Get great great grandmother. We're in action. We've got the old drone in the sky, you can probably hear that. <coughs> oh shit! Your rod. Now got two rods in the water, but both the rods we've got in the water have been wiped out by the boat. So I don't think either of our two remaining rods are fishing. So we need to have a bit of a sort out and then get all of the rods done again. Then we start catching some more. How about that for some first morning carnage? We did not expect that. We almost didn't fish. I'm glad we did though. <laughs> I'm certainly glad we did, but yeah, look at that. Carnage, everywhere you look. Do oh, you want to have a quick glance at the fish? Here we go, there's the fish. Look everyone, he's like a smaller version of the one I've got in the sling and a bigger version of the one that Mitch has just put back. Starbo scales down by town. Lovely. Right, well, I don't like the old uh, knee up on the tail end stance, but Gemma hurt my wrist the other day, and I'm going to really struggle, I think, this week. This is my second car. I reckon he's an upper 20, maybe 30 pounds, but probably just shy, to be honest. Levery old chap, like I said earlier, just like his big brother. I'll spin him around quickly, show you his other side. There we go. There's his other side. And I reckon we could get a, we could catch a lot of carp this trip from what I've seen so far. I certainly think that's on the cards. You'll see, eh? Fingers crossed. Go on, mate. Okay, right, we've got that one back. It's time to get the big boy out now. He's just round the corner there in the sling. We'll get him out. And you can uh, you can watch me really struggle to hold him. My wrist is hurting, I'm gonna moan about that all week. So just uh, prepare yourself for that. There was a carp, just seen one show. I've seen a few now. They're out here, they're active. If these rods that we've got out weren't fucked, we'd have had more bites. So the quicker we can get our rods back in the water, the better. First things first though, eh? There we go. Oh, look at the colour of him. No wonder he was glowing orange in the night while I was playing him. Look at his tail, the size of that wrist. Look at that. 
Wow. <laughs> Proper slab of a carp that is. You are going to hurt my wrist. I got like this. Bust. Right. If you told me I was going to catch this carp as my first bite from this massive lake, I would not have believed you. We came here to catch 20 and 30 pounders to practice using the boats. So to catch a fish of this size straight away is absolutely mind blowing. I am buzzing a proper slab of French mirror carp. Big leathery flanks and that orange color is what I could see towing me around in the night under the head torch light. A proper big carp to start the trip. Hopefully the first of a few more to come. There are big fish in here. Apparently there's a 65 pound fully scaled. He'd be nice, wouldn't he? But for now, buzzing me socks off. All right, one last look at this massive French mirror carp. Thank you very much, mate. Mwah. Off you go. Oh, off you go, mate. Go on. That way. Always elegant. 